Well, it's one of the most talked about shows in Broadway history, Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, and it's celebrating a big milestone, its one year anniversary. Of course, the show has gone through a few different incarnations, but one thing has remained constant, and that is its star, Reeve Carney. Take a look. in our studio today we got a lot to talk about so uh one year the show has been yeah, on broadway i couldn't believe it yeah it's kind of crazy obviously the big thing people talked about with the show was that there were a lot of problems there were there were show problems there were safety problems did you at any point sort of give up hope and say wow great i'm part of the one of the biggest productions ever and we're never going to see the light of day i never lost hope but i mean you know if when you're in the middle of things the, i mean the only way to really get beyond things like that, the criticism and the things that were, you know, traumatic events, where it was just to focus on the work. And for me, being, you know, new to acting, I mean, this is all a happy accident for me because I started as a musician. So there was so much else for me to focus on yeah. that to spend too much time on the dark side of things didn't really help, which, you know, kind of goes along with the whole turn off the dark message. So but that's what we were always trying to do with this show, and I think we've finally done it. Do you feel like there's any way in which uh, some of that negativity, some of the criticism actually made the cast closer, made oh, you guys yeah, band together certainly. to make it a success and defy the odds. I mean, even when Chris Tierney got injured, the next day he was in his hospital bed like, hey guys, I'll be back soon-ish. Yeah. So that was kind of funny, and he, he was always so positive, and especially when he did fully recover and came back into the show, it, yeah, it unified everyone, and so it, things did get turned around for the better, which was really great. I mean, it, it, it's kind of... It's interesting how that works with, when you think about the whole message of the show, the whole rise above, turn off the dark, with great power comes great responsibility, all those things. It, it sort of, you know, I guess life imitated art in a way. Well, that is, that's exactly what you guys have done. I mean, a year later, no one really would have predicted when things were difficult that a year later you guys would be not just still going, but going strong, right. selling out houses and having great success. You mentioned that you're a musician uh, first and an actor second. What was that process like of coming into a Broadway show where you're melding those two skills together? It's interesting. I mean, I've always been very theatrical in, in the style of performance with my band. Um, I mean, we, we grew up listening to guys like Edgar Winter and Queen, guys who were just really, you know, Freddie Mercury and Edgar Winter are sort of just like... Yeah, nothing, nothing dramatic and flamboyant yeah. about Freddie Mercury yeah. and Edgar Winter, yeah. Yeah, so like, we, uh, that's kind of what we grew up on. And so we, uh, I had that sensibility, and I guess... Uh, my, my friend T.V. Carpio brought Julie Taymor to come see my band play at the Mercury Lounge here in New York City. And uh, that's how it all started. Julie saw me and said, hey, you know, I think you look like a prince. That's what she said to me. And I said, okay, that's nice. <laughs> and so she cast me as the prince <laughs> in her film, The Tempest. And then after Have you that, ever done Shakespeare before that? No. I mean, that's a big, Julie Taymor, oh, famous, sort of a legend doing Shakespeare on film. Yeah. And then you get a, a, an important role in The Tempest. I know. I don't think I was reviewed very well, but that's okay. I mean, it was my first, my first <laughs> job. I tried my best. I mean, Helen Mirren was so sweet to me, though, and Alfred Molina. He actually, Alfred Molina thought I was from England, which was kind of cool when I met him. Because I had to do a British accent, which, that was tough. That was one of the bigger challenges of that. But, yeah, Shakespeare, my gosh, that's, that's some hard work. So Shakespeare to Broadway, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing next. I, you, know, you probably know, too. But yeah, the, the Jeff Buckley yeah. biopic. Yeah, yeah that, that's another interesting challenge. It's interesting, though, because with Broadway, I get to use the acting and the singing. But with the Buckley film, I'm going to get to use the acting, the singing, and my guitar playing. Because I, I was actually a, a jazz guitar major at the University of Southern California. That's what I really started as before I started singing. Wow. So jazz guitar to singing to... No, you seem like a young guy to have had so many different careers already. I guess so. I, I mean... I knew I wanted to be an entertainer by the time I was eight. So really? I don't know how that happened, but I just had this thing where I just knew I wanted to entertain people in some way. And that you're doing. <laughs> so uh, Bono and The Edge obviously did the music for the show. Uh, how closely did you work with these guys? Pretty closely. I mean, they, they would, whether it be, uh, you know, in, in the audition process, I, I remember when I first met them and sang the songs for them. That was the beginning of it, and then you know they worked with us a lot at the theater and in recording studios throughout New York and even in L.A. So yeah, I worked with them quite a bit, and they taught me a lot about singing from a non-technical standpoint, which was kind of cool because I, you know, I'm trained as a singer, but they have things to offer that you know you wouldn't necessarily learn when you're thinking about technique. Is there is it? an intimidation factor there where you're like, hey, look, Bono, probably the greatest musician I of my know. generation. I think I'll stand up and sing for him. <laughs> no. I mean, is there a moment where a you're like, oh, I don't want to do this? It is, but, you know, I've, I think 
because of being, like I mentioned, like the theatricality of my band Carney and, you know, just the way we sort of tend to do things, I am used to sort of being ignited by that sort of energy. When, when, when I'm, nerves sort of drive my performance. Right. So I think when, when I am in the presence of someone like Bono, it makes me step up to my higher level. So I think that was helpful for the audition process. You said they taught you a little bit about singing, but from a non-technical standpoint. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. What, what did you take away from your time with them? Well, Bono as a singer and Edge as a singer as well, both of them sing, um, but uh, you know, they, they would sort of deal with me on a level of, you know, really focusing on the lyric, which is something that I've learned so much by doing Broadway. I mean, being a musician first, and like I said, a jazz guitar player first, and blues guitar player, I think more in terms of sound than I do words oftentimes. Right. And Bono and Edge think so much in terms of words and how they connect with a broad audience that being on Broadway and working with them has really helped me in terms of being a communicator of songs. And Bono's great with that. So that's in U2. I mean, that's kind of, he's in, in the rock world, he's great at storytelling. Right. Rave man, thank you for being with us. Oh, yeah, thank Best you. Best of luck. Spider Man Turn Off the Dark, it is flying high at the Foxwoods Theater on Broadway. It's a year and going strong, and I'm sure it has got many years left. <laughs>